Hello everyone, and welcome back to uh, to Retrothon. Yes, it's it's me again. Um, this time running an actual retro game. It's, it seems crazy to think that some of these games are, are now considered retro. Um, but this is Metal Gear Solid: The Twin Snakes. Um, this is the GameCube exclusive remake of Metal Gear Solid One. Um, it is considered a massive misfire when it comes to remakes, um, but it is absolutely a, a wonderful game um, and a very, very good speed run. This is going to be, uh, I'm not going to be loading, um, this is going to be on the very easy difficulty and I'm going to be getting all dog tags. Um, so there are 27 dog tags throughout, uh, very easy. I must collect all of them uh, and then we'll show that off at the end. Okay, so we're going to get this game started in three, two, one, go. Excellent. All right, so twi Twin Snakes. Um, as I said, uh, the start Twin Snakes is the is the GameCube exclusive remake of Metal Gear Solid One. Um, I am running this on the Dolphin emulator because it is much more accessible. Um, I do I don't actually own a GameCube. Um, I've never owned a GameCube, um, but I do have uh, I do have a Wii, uh, and I actually have the Japanese version of uh, Twin Snakes uh, on the GameCube to play on my Wii. Um, it was actually cheaper to mod. <laughs> mod my Wii to make it play Japanese games than it was to buy a European version of the Twin Snakes because Twin Snakes is quite a rare game and, you know, I mean, you're all retro game enthusiasts. You know what it's like in the market trying to get hold of some of these games these days. Some of them is a pain, particularly Nintendo games. Uh, it seems to be the Nintendo games are the most difficult to get hold of. Um, but yeah, um, Twin Snakes runs on the Metal Gear Solid 2 engine, um, and there are some good things about that, there are some bad things about that. Uh, the main bad thing about that is Metal Gear Solid 1, its characters, its story, its environments, its gameplay, none of those were designed with the Metal Gear Solid 2 engine in mind. They, of course, were all designed with the Metal Gear Solid 1 engine in mind. So just taking the story and gameplay, uh, and most importantly, the maps, uh, the rooms, the environment, the textures, all of that, taking all of that and slapping the Metal Gear Solid 2 engine on it causes some problems, uh, causes some good things, uh, but a lot of bad things. Um, the other main complaint about this game are the cutscenes. Obviously, we're not going to watch any of the cutscenes because we're speedrunning this. Um, but um, the cutscenes in the game, uh, they weren't directed by Hideo Kojima. Um, unfortunately, I, for I forget the name of the director. Um, and they were very bombastic, over the top, um, very, very silly. Things like snake um, somersaulting over tank missiles and, and weird stuff. Um, but... The game is a hell of a lot of fun to speedrun, um, even even if some other elements of it aren't that great. Um, but as we're getting all dog tags, um, this is the first. This is this is one of the trickiest rooms for dog tags, uh, which is really nice. That is room two of the game. So I'm gonna um, gonna focus on on this room because there are three dog tags to get here in the heliport. Um, so, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting the attention of a couple of guards um, and then holding them up. So we get attention of that guard, move it's over, fair. get that guard's attention, hold that guard up, aim at his face, um, and by doing so, that is going to cause them to to, sh to wiggle and shake and drop their dog bags. We're not going to collect those yet because we want to get uh, over here to this guard so that we can do the same to this guard. So we're going to freeze him, hold him up. He's going to wiggle. There's the dog tag. We're going to take him out. And now we're going to run and grab the other two dog tags. Uh, so we drop down here. There's the one that we got from that guard. That's going to take these guards up. Take these guards out. And that's the heliport. As I say, that is one of the that is one of the most difficult uh, rooms in the game uh, for dog tags, and it throws us at, at it in room two. It's um, quite the quite the difficulty curve. Um, 
So now uh, we've actually got a little bit of a break from the dog tags for a little bit. Um, we can just move throughout the game. Uh, you'll notice that I'm constantly equipping and unequipping my M9 as I go through here. Um, this is an animation cancel. Even while Snake is looking in first person, it still cancels the animation of him crawling um, and it speeds us up getting through here quite nicely. Um, once we're through the vent, we've got a couple of dog tags to get from the guards in the tank hangar. So, uh, yeah, we're just through the vent, keep going. Uh, there, is a, there is a point where we'll see this from like a top-down view, so you'll, you'll actually see the animation cancel, but, but trust me when I say it is quicker. Uh, it allows us to beat, beat a cycle here as well. Freeze. So we're going to hold this guard up. Don't kill me. We're not going to kill him. We're just going to trank him. Uh, because we're playing on very easy, um, we can trank a guard uh, anywhere on his body. Doesn't matter where, and he will go down instantly. On on harder difficulties, you would have to do um, a headshot or a heart shot to instantly put them to sleep. Because uh, you know that's how that's how tranquilizers work. If you if you shoot someone in the if you shoot someone in the foot, it takes some time for that to you know to go through the bloodstream and put you to sleep. Uh, but very easy, it's, it's very kind to us. Uh, so now here we do have a bit of a a bit of a, um, a dog tag break. Uh, there's not going to be any dog tags until after the next two bosses. Uh, so it allows us to just focus on here. So uh, as we go through the vent, once again, I'm going to be uh, quickly equipping and unequipping my M9. So we, we do that animation cancel and Snake gets through just that little bit quicker. Uh, that animation cancel comes in very handy um, in a few places. We'll, we'll see it. Uh, we'll see it used in a different way um, in a little bit. Uh, there's a mandatory cutscene here where Snake looks down through the vent and, and sees sees Meryl for the first time. See, we're gonna we're gonna skip that. Uh, we are coming up to the the first boss. It's not it's not really a boss. It's sort of a boss. Um, this is uh, this is going to be Guard Rush, uh, and there's a little secret. Uh, there's a trick that we're going to use called the Socom Roll. Uh, this was found only last year. Um, MGSR had um, a Twin Snakes very easy uh, tournament. It wasn't all dog tags. It was just uh, just very easy. Um, and we had a we had a tournament, uh, which is what got me to learn Twin Snakes in the first place. It was really good. And during the tournament, um, another runner by the name Snake Socom found this this trick. Um, don't know if I can see it. There's the Socom outside. Um, and what we do is I'm going to line up. Hopefully, yep. I'm going to line up here, and I'm going to roll out of this door and try and grab it. And you heard the noise. I grabbed the soak on. Uh, I did a little pause buffer there just to, to give me time, um, which is pretty standard. Uh, so now means we've got the soak on straight away. And we can absolutely blast through this fight. What are you waiting for? Shoot! Don't talk to me if we like don't grab rookie. it, we grab the soak on from where the ammo was Shoot. that I just picked up, and we go down and uh, get some more ammo out of a locker. Uh, so it saves them a nice little bit of time. There we go, that was a, li a little messy there. Oops, some more soak ammo there, so I'm going to grab that. Uh, we've got th three more guards. Uh, that was a heart shot. Um, when when shooting guards lethally, um, shooting them in the head or the heart is an insta kill. Um, other than that, it's it's three shots. Um, so always nice when we can get a, when we can get a heart shot. We don't go for headshots because um, if you do a headshot, um, the guard plays a different animation for falling over and takes longer to fall over and die. They sort of do this whole. Uh, flop um and that takes that takes a little bit longer for them to to die and, and causes a bit of slowdown with that section all right uh so now we are gonna go and get prepared for our our, our first proper boss you yeah, know that, that's not really a boss it's kind of a boss um but our first our first proper boss um is going to be ocelot now if you've not played twin snakes but you're a fan of the original on the playstation um you are going to be extraordinarily disappointed with this boss this is probably the worst change 
between the uh, the original and the remake. Um, if you remember in the original, um, it's a really nice top-down cat and mouse sort of um, ring around the roses of uh, of these two um, two guys, you know, battling out with pistols. Um, in Twin Snakes, because we're running on the the MGS2 engine, we can aim in first person, and this fight becomes extraordinarily trivial as a result. Three. Ah! And that's the fight. As you, as you say, that is, for me, it's the worst change in the entire game between the remake and the original. Like, the, the original fight is, is a lot of fun, running around and around. As, as speedrunners, we throw grenades at him in the original. Um, it's over very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, just in, in this, even on, even on the hardest difficulty, on extreme, it's just that. It's so easy. All right, uh, we do have a um, our own codec call we need to make. We're going to call Meryl on 148.15 uh, because we need to call... If we call her now, she's going to call us back in time uh, to open up the um, the door out to the canyon. Uh, so we just go through this cutscene. Um, you know, can't, we can't skip codec calls. We can skip cutscenes. We can't skip codec calls. All right, uh, I'm going to grab some extra ammo here uh, because we now have two more dog tags to collect. And we can lose quite a bit of time if um, if we screw up any of these. So I'm going to make sure that I get around that guard there. there. Hold him up. Don't kill me. Take his. We're now going to move down to here because now that I've done all that, this guard is going to move into this position. Freeze. Perfect. Help. Just gonna get this guard's dog tags. And that's the two dog tags from there. Oh. And whilst we're at the elevator, I'm just gonna quickly switch back to the SOCOM. because uh, we've now got another another trick called the uh, called the laser roll. So we need to get through the we need to get through the laser room here. Um, and this is gonna require some very precise movement. Uh, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be quiet so I can concentrate on it for a second. Cool. <laughs> That's good. So I took out took out two of the lasers, but all of the other lasers I rolled through. Um, that is as precise as it looks. Um, the timing has to be very, very good on that. Um, otherwise, you get caught by a laser and you are dead. You cannot uh, you cannot escape if the lasers catch you. Um, so that was really nice. All right, next boss. Um, this is going to be the the M1 tank, um, and this is a boss where I actually do think that the remake does a better job than the original. We're not going to be throwing grenades into him. We're going to be shooting him in the head instead. Uh, and again, some very precise shots here. So I'm going to um, I'm just going to allow myself to concentrate. Uh, another fight where if this goes wrong, you can lose an awful lot of time. First gun is not too bad. It's the, the second gunner here that I've got to be very careful with. If I don't get a headshot, then we lose a lot of time because uh, we don't do enough damage um, and the tank will start to move away by by doing... That was, that was a perfect tank fight. <laughs> that was really good. That's what we always want. Um, but by doing the, the tank fight like that, the tank always stays in one place and we, you know, um, if he starts moving away, it becomes very difficult to land those headshots. Uh, a little trick here, um, we can quickly equip and unequip the M9 to get through there. Um, not only does it get us through that quicker than crawling, um, there is a codec call that should take place uh, where um, Naomi and the Colonel tell Snake that you mustn't use weapons in this area because of all the radiation. Um, because we're never crawling on the floor, we don't get that cutscene, uh, which is really nice. Uh, we've got another dog tag to collect here. So we're going to go down and grab the Nikita because we need the Nikita in order to uh, get through the freeze. <gasps> oh. uh, in order to get through the laser grid and on B2, I'm going to grab this guard's dog tag while we're at it. That is one of five dog tags in this room, if I remember correctly. A uh, lot of dog tags available on on B1 of um, of the new building. All right, so now we're going to go down to um, oh. I just need to set up some weapons. There we go. All right. The electric floor here, exactly the same as the original. We need to fire in a key to the electrical panel because the floor ahead of us 
um, is electrified. There is no skip for this. Um, on the PC version of Metal Gear Solid 1, very easy difficulty, there is a skip for this, and it's called the Nikita skip. Um, sorry, it's called the Nick Eater skip, because uh, I found it and named it after myself. <laughs> Because um, we speedrunners are an egotistical bunch. We love naming things after ourselves. Uh, so now we are going to go through to our next boss fight. This is uh, the Cyborg Ninja. And this is another fight that actually is um, very, very well recreated from the original. It's not that much different from the original. Um, but again, I need to... What I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to try. I'm going to try and keep um, the, the ninja in his first phase. So to do so, I'm going to I'm going to do a punch, punch, kick combo, and then I'm going to shoot him. He deflects it, and then I punch him again. And by doing this, he never goes into stage two of this fight, which is where he, he you know he then says, oh, you know. Real, real warriors don't use weapons, we use fists, and you just have a fist fight with him instead. Uh, but by doing this, he never he never leaves the first phase. You also notice that when I do the punch, punch, kick, I'm quickly... Um, I'm quickly reverting to the Nikita. By having the Nikita out when we kick, we actually do the damage that we would do with a Nikita hit instead. Um, because the different weapons that you have out determine how much damage your melee attacks do. So now I have purpose, you can't beat him in phase one. I have now purposely put him into phase two. Oh, and just a quick roll through him. And that's the end of the fight. That was a, that was a really nice ninja fight. Um, uh, and now after that fight, we get treated to the longest section of codex and cutscenes in the game. So we're going to be sat here just skipping through these codex for a short time. Um, so whilst we're skipping through these, um, throughout this run, I'm doing a lot of comparisons to, uh, between the original game and this remake. Um, if you've ever wondered what it would be like to see those two games ran back to back, um, or rather ran next to each other, so that you can see those differences for yourself, yes, I'm doing my own little plug here. Um, I hope RetroThon are okay with that. Um, myself and a friend, uh, a fellow speedrunner house test, are going to be on GVQ's Hotfix um, this Friday. Um, uh, fri this Friday coming up, where we are doing that race. He will be playing Metal Gear Solid 1 PC very easy, uh, all bosses. I will be playing this, um, just without dog tags. Just, just normal. Oh, that was not a very good roll there. Um, so yeah, if you like, if you want to see what those two games are like side by side, uh, so you can see those comparisons in a speed run, then you know, come come check that out. It's a race we've done a couple of times before, and it's it's really good at, at showing, you know, what what that's like. Cool. Um, anyway, plug over. We're gonna get some more dog tags. Uh, we've got a dog tag here. We have to get at this moment. Um, Meryl is wearing Johnny Sasaki's uniform, and that includes Johnny Sasaki's um, dog tag. So we're going to roll into Meryl there. We're going to do that. That gets us Johnny Sasaki's dog tag. She's going to turn around, and now we're going to chase her into the bathroom. Don't do this at home, folks. Don't chase women into bathrooms. Very, very rude. Now that, we have, uh, now that we have Johnny's dog tag, we now want Meryl's dog tag. Ah. So we're going to bap her with the Nikita. We're going to do the, exactly the same thing again. And now we have Meryl's dog tag. And now we can run off into our next boss fight. Uh, so the next boss is Psycho Mantis. And again, this is another fight where I do think this is an improvement on the original. Uh, being able to aim in first person is, um, is really useful. Ah. Just going to roll through Meryl there. Wait, wait for this out. Um, we are going to have to... Meryl's going to get possessed by Psycho Mantis. Um, so we're going to have to take her out. Easiest way of taking her out, once again, we are just going to bap her with the Nikita. She takes, so, she takes so much of a beat into Meryl throughout this run. It's, um, it's a real shame. All right, so this is the Psycho Mantis fight. Uh, it requires a very specific setup at the very start. It needs to be in the right position uh, to get my first few hits off. We're going to be trying to skip a whole phase. 
so let's try. Ooh, did I duck? Ah, uh, I did. Didn't quite get that. Didn't quite get that set correctly. So we're just gonna wait. Where is he? Well, I'm not doing a very good. I am not doing a very good job here. Where is he? I actually don't know where he is. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Oh no, Mantis, don't set up here. No, I wanted you to be by the desk. He's now making his way over to the desk. Now you'll notice that I am not trying to headshot him, and instead I'm shooting him in his, in his right leg. For some reason, and we have no idea why, Mantis's right leg is programmed to do headshot damage. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get the face skip because I've made a right mess at the, the start of this fight. So we're just going to now try and keep doing headshot damage. Um, yeah, if, if anyone can ever get in touch with the developer who worked on this game and tell us why Mantis's right leg deals headshot damage, we'd love to know. Okay, I'll go final bit here. I've got to be a bit careful with here because he's got a bit more stamina left than I would like. I did not get the uh, did not get the right. I make it. Sorry, I'm making a bit of a mess of this uh, at the end of this. And one more hit, and he's down. Phew. That was that was quite messy. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, I lost lost quite a bit of time on that, but um, it is one of the trickier bosses. Very, very precise, particularly at the very start, very precise um, shots. And before we move on, we have another dog tag to get. We've got Psycho Mantises. Very important. If we were to leave this room, that dog tag would be lost and this run would be over. <laughs> there, are a few, there are a few moments in the game where if you miss a dog tag, you cannot go back and get it. All right, on to the caves. Um, in the caves here, we're going to need to... Uh, we're going to try and not get hit by these dogs. Um, it's not always possible. Some of the, the... The second dog's position is usually a bit random. There we go. Like that. Uh, and there's also this little... The, the position of that little... The little dog there. The, the pupper, as we call him. Um, he can be random. And as I turned that corner, Snake was actually aiming... Uh -huh. Snake was actually aiming at the pupper rather than the big dog, so um, was not a surprise there that I got taken out. Uh, that little thing that I did where I, sh I shot Meryl and then rolled through her, uh, it just skips a, a, a short cutscene. There's a, a little cutscene that plays there where, um, you know, she says, what's wrong, Snake? I thought you were good with dogs. And, you know, we, we just shoot her and then roll through her to, um, to get through the door before that cutscene is triggered. All right, um, we're now going to leave Meryl behind because Barrel, unfortunately, has been shot by Sniper Wolf. Uh, fans of the original may know exactly what I've got to do here. I've got to go and find a sniper rifle. Um, that sniper rifle is all the way back in the arm. So where we fought, where we fought Revolver Ocelot in the first building, yep, we've got to go all the way back to there. Oh, I did not shoot that dog. I'm going to roll through that dog instead. Oh, and there's the second dog. Oh, you are being mean to me today, doggos. Get through before he hits me. There we go. Uh, and here you can see you can see this animation cancel uh, that we're doing to get through those a bit quicker. Okay, a rough couple of caves. Look, we've only got to go through those caves one more time. So yeah, we're gonna make our way back to get the sniper rifle. Uh, we do have one more dog tag to get uh, before we get there, though. Um, and I told you there's lots of gut, there's lots of dog tags to be had in new building B1. Uh, this is the very last one. There's a guard here just using the loo. Freeze. Poor guy. We're going to disrupt him whilst don't he's taking me. a pee. That's very rude as well, guy. Don't don't interrupt guys while they're trying to take a pee. It's not it's not very pleasant. Um, cool. So we're just going to make our way into the lift. Wait for the lift to come down so that we can go back down and through to the armory. Um, and there we can grab our, our PSG one. So. It, it's quite a bit of a trek, quite a bit of a trek back in order to get the PSG one, but it is what it is. We, you know, we, we have to, we just have to keep on going. Um, don't know why I'm back in the commander's room. I'm making my way back to the caves all of a sudden. Um, I don't know. I, I think muscle memory's taken over and I'm just, you know, this isn't the route we want to be taking to get to the, 
to 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 get to the uh, the PSG one. Um, I, there was some item I picked up there. I'm not quite sure what it was. Um, I think it's a PSG one T. I don't know what that's all about. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna you know I'll just roll with it and keep going. Um, yeah. All right, let's stop this silly charade because it's not funny anymore. Um, luckily, in Twin Snakes, um, they decided to cut this section a bit shorter. You can go back to the armory and get the PSG-1, uh, but they also placed that PSG-1T there. It's exactly the same as sniper rifle, but it fires tranquilizer shots. Uh, so it means we don't have to go all the way back. We just take out sniper wall from here instead. We're, we're just Tranker. Uh, I'm trying to get headshots. Oh, I'm trying to get headshots, but um, ide ideally we want to be doing um, three headshots and one body shot. Um, I ended up doing um, three body shots and two headshots, but... Or three headshots and two... I don't know. Um, Anyway, uh, now we are going to get captured. We are going to go all the way back to uh, to the first building. Can love bloom on the battlefield? I think it can. Uh, so now we're going to get captured. Um, unfortunately, this is the this is the one choice point in the moment of the game where we get the choice of whether we leave with Otacon or leave with Meryl. As you can probably guess. It is faster in a speed run for us to skip the torch section, leave with Otacon, and that does unfortunately mean that Meryl is going to die at the hands of Ot Ocelot. I'm so sorry to all of the Meryl levels out there. Meryl is going to die. We are going to leave with Otacon. Um, this is the non-canon ending of the game. Uh, in, the official, in the official canon, uh, Snake does not submit to torture. He does save Meryl and they escape. Um, obviously, if you've played Metal Gear Solid 4, you'll know that Meryl is in Metal Gear Solid 4. Uh, and if she died in Metal Gear Solid 1, she would not be available to uh, appear in Metal Gear Solid 4. All right. We're now captured. We're going to try and get out of prison. Um, <laughs> snake bitch. <laughs> um, whilst we're in here, uh, Johnny, we're going to try and stop Johnny from sneezing. Uh, the first sneeze, we let him have for free. <laughs> Uh, but now he's going to be patrolling, and every time he comes to a stop, he has a chance of sneezing. Shut up in there, will you? Shut up in there, will you? So every time he stops like that, there's a chance he could sneeze. If he sneezes, he um, it takes slightly longer because we have to stop and wait for him to sneeze. So instead, we're going to try and avoid him from sneezing by constantly knocking. Shut up in there, will you? And getting him to to say sharp instead. Shut up in there, will you? Hey, hey. Shut up in there, will Shut up there, will ya? Hey. Hey. Shut up in there, Shut will up in there, will ya? Hey. Hey. Shut up in there, Shut up in there, will ya? And that's probably about it. And now he's gonna... <gasps> he's gonna have another sneeze. And he's gonna have some stomach problems in a second. There he goes. Oh! My stomach! <laughs> I love... I love the delivery of that line. It's so good. No! My stomach. Such, it's such a good delivery of that line. I so I so much prefer Twin Snakes Johnny Sasaki to um to the original. In the original, he's very very shouty and angry and annoyed. Like, hey, shut up in there, will ya? He's re but in here he's a lot more agreeable. He's like, hey, come on, come on, come on, shut up, will ya? Come on. Hey, I'm here. He's much more civilized. I, I much prefer Twin Snakes Johnny. Um, so much so that in Twin Snakes, we're not going to kill him. Uh, in MGS1, we would kill him, uh, which again is non-canon. Uh, Johnny is in MGS4 as well. Uh, we do the same trick, put some put some ketchup down, um, and we're going to do a trick called the double bump. Um, what we're going to try and do here is, um, is skip an event flag by making the game think that we're still trapped in the cell and we haven't escaped yet. To do that, I need to grab Snake's equipment without Johnny running off to the toilet. Perfect. That is the double bump. 
Uh, so now, as long as, uh, as long as I now get out of here before Johnny goes to the toilet, we have skipped an uh, we have skipped an event flag. The game now thinks we are still trapped in the prison. We can tell that because there are no gun turrets. When you first leave prison here, there's some gun turrets in this room. Those gun turrets aren't here because it thinks we're still in uh, the previous room. The advantage of this, um, it means the next event flag that comes up is when we get back to where Meryl was shot. Uh, we do have a uh, oh, whoops. Uh, we do have another dog tag to collect, so I'm going to co collect that dog tag from here, and I'll Free. hold no. this guard up. Please, don't. Gonna get this guard salt tag. We're going to get the SOCOM suppressor, uh, which is a very important item. We need the SOCOM suppressor in um, in dog tag runs. So I'll talk more about the, the event flag that we skipped when we come to it. Um, it'll be very important later. Uh, but just know that with it, we've skipped about 40 seconds, which is quite significant. So we're going to hold up this guard. Kill that guard. Going to get over here, make sure that guard doesn't see me. Hold him up. Then while we're waiting for him to do that, we're going to take out that camera, shoot him, grab his... Uh, Grab his dog tags. That camera now means that we can get to this guard without that camera seeing us. Free. Hold him up and get his dog tags. There we go. Uh, and that's the snowfield. Three more dog tags from the snowfield. That is, it uh, can be quite a tricky room there. Um, we're all good. So. Unfortunately, now we we do now have our biggest dog tag drought of the game. Uh, the next dog tag we are going to collect is upon beating Sniper Wolf for the second time. So we have a very long section here with no dog tags. Uh, so we've got to do a bit of backtracking. We've got to go all the way back through to, to where we were before. So um, as we're on our way there, um, I'll explain the, the event flag that we skipped. So because the game the game story flag thinks that we're still trapped in the prison, um, it's going to skip the very next trigger that takes place. Uh, and that trigger is when we come across the pile of blood on the floor when Meryl was shot by Sniper Wolf. What should happen is a cutscene should play and then a codec call should play. Uh, and it's one of the longer codec calls in the game. But because we skipped that story flag and this event flag isn't going to trigger, um, we skip both of those. We just run straight through it. Uh, and that saves, as I said, including getting out of prison nice and quickly. Uh, I can get my handkerchief out now. Um, including getting out of prison quickly, um, that saves us about 45 seconds. It's quite a significant skip. Oh, hello, Papa. <laughs> He's not usually in that cave. Uh, I'm going to switch to my stun grenades here. Oh, rolled a little bit too early there. Uh, now I've got to get ready on the change disc. Um, so, uh, unlike Metal Gear Solid, so there we go. That point there is where we should have got a cutscene and a codec call. But because I did the double bump correctly and we got out of prison uh, without triggering it, we don't get that trigger. Uh, so now we're free to just uh, make our way through. Uh, disc swap is at this point. Um, in the original, it's much later on. Uh, that's it. All, on, all I do on Dolphin is just click change disc and move on to disc two. And we begin disc two with the tower A climb. Uh, the specific setup for the tower A climb, I'm going to cook a stun grenade here. I'm going to throw the stun grenade here, trigger this cutscene, and that stun grenade will now detonate as those two guards approach it. Just gives me a little bit of a little bit of time to get away from them. Um, as I run up here, there's going to be a guard I need to take out with my M9. I'll then switch back to the stun grenades um, and throw some stun grenades, use M9, and it's a, a, a bit of a swip swap in between the two weapons. Um, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward, even if you get shot or make a mistake, you don't lose a whole lot of time, and you've got so much health on very easy that you don't need to worry about it. On, on higher difficulties, there is a lot more management of this going to roll over that guard because I think I was going to uh, walk over him. Uh, so there's going to be another guard that's going to appear here. Got him. He didn't shoot. That was always always nice when you can uh, avoid getting shot there. Now I've got two more stun grenades I'm going to use. I need to start cooking one on floor 16. Uh, so that's floor 15. Floor 16. 
and then throw it here. Oh, not a great throw that, unfortunately, but oh well. There's a little mistakes here don't cost a lot of time. Uh, the next one is on floor 23. So that's floor 22, floor 23, start cooking. And throw. That was better. Takes that guard out. Uh, and that's the tower rake. Uh, unfortunately, unlike the original, you may have heard in uh, last year, um, the boba skip was found for the original where we get through the door halfway up. Um, it was a, a massive event. It, uh, it, was, it was amazing. Um, I was very much um, heavily involved in that. Um, if you'd like to learn more, I have a, a really great video on my YouTube channel about how the boba skip was discovered. Unfortunately, does not translate into twin snakes. There is no boba skip for twin snakes yet. It is theoretically doable. Uh, people have used cheat engines to like get rid of walls and stuff. If we could find a way through it, it would work. Uh, unfortunately, we can't find a way through it yet. <laughs> All right, uh, onto the repel. Repel sequence in uh, in Twin States is very, very simple and straightforward. We do a couple of jumps down, move down to the left, a couple of jumps over, and we're done straight away. There's a little skip uh, towards the edge where we um, we like put Snake in a weird position on oh, on the raptor on the rafters, um, and that's going to cause him just to to glide straight down. This was oh, ah, I got. Oh. That's a bit more awkward. I got shot there because I kind of screwed that up. But there we go. There's the the glide down. Uh, that was okay. I um I got hit by the steam twice, um, which slowed me down a little bit. Uh, this walkway here, um, very very um, careful shot. I need to blindly take that guard out with a headshot. Then throw a stun grenade. I cooked that stun grenade a little late, but that takes those guards out, and we're through. Uh, the other option with those guards, you can use the PSG-1 team uh, to just take them out instead, but that method is much quicker. Uh, the difficult bit with that method is that headshot at the start, because um, as you'll notice with these outside sections, Twin Snakes is really dark outside. And I don't mean like, oh, it's creepy and edgy and, and horror. I mean, it, it there's no light. <laughs> it is, for some reason, they, they turn the, the, the brightness on this game right down. Um, Oh, I <laughs> rolled, rolled a little bit too early there. Um, so yeah, very, very dark for some reason. Um, it makes the behind D fight a little tricky. Uh, we'll see that in a minute, because that is going to be the next boss fight. Let's get through this cutscene. Uh, we're now going to make our way up Tower B. Um, and to do that, we're going to throw chaff grenades to take out the gun turrets. Uh, and then we, I'm just going to make sure that I time my rolls correctly so that I don't fall flat on my face at the top. Throw a second chaff grenade there. Uh, and it's just just it as we as we move up. It's uh, very very simple. Roll, chaff, roll, run, roll, run. <laughs> not not really much more to. To say about it. One more chaff grenade. And as I roll here, I'm going to quickly get the stinger out and unequip it. Uh, I should say on, on Twin Snakes, we um, we run with um, previous on weapons. So that means that Snake can have two weapons equipped at any one time and can swap between them. Um, the other option is equip unequip, where you just have one weapon or no weapons. It's very important that you use previous because it really allows you to set up um, for, for fights and stuff. So right now, my main weapon is none. I don't have a main weapon. And my previous is the stinger. So it means if I, if I quick equip, I'll equ immediately equip to the stinger, which is obviously what I want, because we're now going to fight the Hind D. Hind D is probably the worst boss in Twin Snakes. There's a lot of RNG, and I said very early on, and I've, I've said a couple of times throughout this game, that this is ran on the MGS2 engine. Um, so you'd think that means it's pretty much like a, a straight-up carbon copy oh, of the MGS2 engine. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And one of the more annoying things about this game is the stinger is just terrible. The, the stinger on uh, the stinger on MGS2 is incredibly accurate and very, very well, 
very, very well done. You aim at something, you lock on, and it's perfect. On Twin Snakes, the lock on is just awful. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, I had to. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Ah, he's already gone down. Okay, so now we go into hide and seek, and this is the most annoying. Oh, he came up very, very quickly. Two, three, four, five. Lock on, lock on, lock on. Ah, I didn't get the hit. So the hide and seek bit is the bit that makes Twin Snakes hide very, very annoying, because now you'll see he's spending a very long time hiding out. I can't shoot him at this point. I have to wait for him to come back up. And it's very random as to how long it takes him to go down and stay up. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. And what I'm trying to do A, is get one more hit in as he goes down. But because the stinger doesn't lock on very well and is a bit temperamental, it can be very, very difficult to do. Um, so this is one of the reasons why Twin Snakes Runners hate this fight. One, two, three, four, five. Now he's moved off to the right. I got him! Nice. Not a bad hide, actually. Um, could have been better. Could could always be better. The hind D is, is such an awkward fight. And as I was saying earlier, the game is very, very dark. It's really difficult to see where the hind is because it's so dark out here. Um, so this, this fight does put a lot of runners off. Uh, but luckily that fight is now over. Uh, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play this bit. Say, so grab, grab some extra ammo. We don't normally need to grab that ammo, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab it anyway. Uh, and at the end of that fight, I quickly swapped my previous to grenades, uh, and then had, um, had grenades equipped, which I think was the wrong thing to do. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> so now I have the grenade. Now I have grenades out because um, as we go down, I'm now gonna throw grenades at the camps. Um, these are done at very precise points. So I'm going to cook. I'm going to throw here. And that should take out all four cameras. Perfect. I'm going to do that four times on the way down. Um, so wait. Wait until I get to an odd-numbered floor. Start cooking a grenade. As soon as Snake hits the top step, throw. And that should take out those three cameras. Perfect. Two more to go. That's floor 18. So when we get to floor 17, we'll start cooking. And cook. And throw. That's both of those cameras. Got one more camera. I don't always get all four. I usually miss at least one. Um, so it is, not, it is nice when I do manage to get all of them. And throw. Hey, we got all four. Beautiful. All right. Uh, now we are going to go down the elevator. We've got the elevator fight. This elevator fight is a complete joke uh, in, in Twin Snakes, specifically on this difficulty. Uh, so I'm going to prepare my weapons. So I've got Stinger on my previous, and I've got C4 out. Um, we're going to use the C4 in this fight. Um, this, is a, this is another blink and you'll miss it moment. Uh, so we're going to trigger the fight. There's going to be a codec call. Uh, jump scare for the, the scary Otacon face. There he is. <laughs> All right, all I'm going to do is hold square, drop the C4, blow it up, kills all four guards, does a bunch of damage to me, but all of those guards are now taken care of. Grab some soak on bullets and uh, get the singer out so it's now on our previous. Can't do that on the harder difficulties, you will kill Snake. <laughs> all right, we're coming up to the next boss. This is Sniper Wolf 2. Uh, this is a bit trickier, but I do much prefer this fight in, in this than the original. The original, it's the worst fight in the game. She's absolutely horrible. Um, but this one, she's a, she's a bit nicer. Uh, so we've got a cutscene and a codec to get through first. Snake! Snake! Well, we're going we're gonna to take her out with the PSG-1T, but we're going to use the stinger to locate her. Uh, for the start of the fight. So I'm going to go and stand on this PSG-1T ammo. She's over there. S swap to the PSG-1T. And now, because I'm still on top of that ammo, I'm going to try and shoot her as she runs across. If I ever run out of ammo, I'll immediately pick it up and uh, keep going. She's hiding behind a tree. This is There's a lot of RNG in this fight. 
want to try and get her to not hide behind trees so much. She's going to go behind this, um, this sort of bit here. Oh, that wasn't a headshot. Oh, she's going back again. There we go. So apart from a couple of RNG elements, which were really annoying there, where she like went back behind the, the snow drift and hid behind a tree, that was actually a pretty good sniper wolf. Um, but yeah, because of the RNG elements with that fight, that fight can go very, very quickly and go very, very slowly. Um, so I did, I did well with what I got given. All right, and next dog tag. It is Sniper Wolf's dog tag. So we're going to get that. We're going to roll over there. going to equip the SOCOM. Uh, we always try and equip, uh, do equipment changes like that um, when we're rolling because it, stop, it means that Snake doesn't lose any momentum. Uh, we've got two dog tags to collect in this room, in the Blast Furnace. The first one, uh, they're actually both reasonably simple. Um, so the first one is the guard patrolling on the top of the catwalk. Make sure I don't hit any of the... Freeze. The floor. Oh, go on. There we go. I <laughs> got him. And um, so here on out, there's going to be a lot. Of, there's going to be a lot of platforms that um, make noises when Snake moves over them, and that can cause some real problems, uh, particularly in the in the underground base that we're going to get towards. Uh, the second guard. We're actually going to ignore him at first. We're going to go into the cargo elevator and then go back in. Because by going back in, we reset the spawn positions of all the guards. And the second guard happens to be right here. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was um, that was something I discovered actually when I, when I first picked up this um, first picked up this run. There used to be a different tactic for getting that guard in the first in the first place. Um, but then I I made a mess. I like I was trying to do it. I made a mess of it. So I thought I'll just reset the room. I'll just leave and come back in to reset my alert. And when I came back in, the guard was right there. I was like, oh, this is probably just quicker. Um, the elevator fight. I'm just gonna blast those guards. Nice quick elevator fight. Uh, now going to set up for the next boss. Equip my rations and equip the uh, stinger on my previous. Next boss is going to be Vulcan Raven. Um, Raven is pretty easy on this difficulty. We're just going to stand in front of him, shoot him with the stinger and just tank. That's why I've equipped the, uh, the rations here so that we can just tank all of his damage. Gonna make our way down here. Now, in the original, you might know that we have to come back up to the blast furnace in order to heat the power key that we're going to collect. Um, you'll be glad to know that in Twin Snakes, we don't have to do that. Um, one of the other nice things about this um, about this remake is they, they did cut out a lot of the backtracking. So you've already seen that we didn't have to go all the way back to the armory to get the PSG-1. Uh, in the same way, there is a new way. You can still do it. You can still grab the power key and go back to the warehouse to freeze it and then back to the uh, back to the blast furnace to heat it but the developers added another way just to cut out some of that backtrack um, and as a result it makes the end of the game a lot faster um, in the original this whole section is very long and drawn out um, but this is nicely sped up um, after this boss though we've got two of the most difficult rooms for dog tags but first up raven say just quit the stinger damage. He does have some iframes, so I do have to space these shots out a little bit. Switch back to the SOCOM, just so that we've got the SOCOM equipped um, as we leave the fight. And that's Raven. Really, really, um, really, really easy fight, that one. Uh, very important that you um, equip your rations before that fight, though. Uh, in the, the aforementioned Twin Snakes tournament that MGSR held last year, I think I was in the... I was either in the quarterfinals or the semifinals. I think it was the semifinals. Um, and I lost because I completely forgot to equip the rations and died to that fight. Um, so, yeah, not dying to that fight and maybe one other small optimization, I would have uh, I would have beaten my opponent, but... The little things. Okay, Warehouse North is one of the most complicated rooms for dog tags, so I'm going to be very quiet whilst I concentrate on this room. What's that? 
there we go. I'm good, I'm good. Just making sure he's dead before I leave. Um, if you shoot a guard in the head and he doesn't die before you leave the room, he's technically not dead. Um, which means he would come back. I do have to go back in that room um, to get through. We still have to go back to the warehouse, but not to freeze the key. Um, so I am still going to have to um, go back in there. And I want him to be properly dead so I don't have to deal with him again. Um, here, throughout this whole section, we get calls from Otacon. Um, we discovered last year that if we call him ourselves, we can get all three codec calls out of the way very quickly, which is really handy saves it saves a, a bit of time you can actually do this on the original as well but it doesn't save you any time okay so uh the other difficult bit with this uh for dog tags there's uh there's a guard here no 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 uh right <laughs> damn it <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to take a death because uh, I killed that guard. For some reason, Snake didn't Snake, hold him up as he turned okay? around. Snake. Snake. Uh, and if you kill one of these guards, they are dead forever. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, I have to take a death there. Um, I think the codec calls... I don't have to... No, I do have to remake the codec calls. So we just got to quickly get through these codec calls again. So call the second one. Call the third one. I say this is probably the most difficult room for this. The the difficult thing with this room is that all of the floors make noise when you walk over them. So any guard at any point will just turn around and go, "What's that noise?" Because he can hear you. Enemy sighted. Requesting backup. I've been pra I've been practicing this room so much, <laughs> and of course, of course it comes to the actual run. Come on. Oh, why has my time? Why has my timer frozen? I don't know why my time is frozen. Um. Don't. Yeah. Sorry. I do not know why my time is frozen there. Um. I'm gonna carry on. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what's gone wrong there, um, and it it won't restart. It is linked to an auto splitter. Freeze. There we go. <laughs> we got third third times the charm, and that's his dog tag. Uh, then we've got one more dog tag in here from this guard here. Freeze. There we go. That one's it. That one's a little easier. Yeah, I can't. I can't get it to. Uh, I can't get the timer to to continue. So, oh well. All right. We're still not done with dog tags, though. That that is the most difficult room for dog tags. Um, it's a shame that, that took me three attempts, but at least we got. Um, if we'd have carried on through there with that guard dead, then this would have been a dead run. This would um, would not have counted. Um, next, we need to collect the power key. Oh, I never changed the grenades. Um, by collect to collect the power key, I'm going to drop down here. Um, and there's a rat that's eaten the key, so we're going to throw a grenade at it. Oh, I actually got hit by my own grenade there. Up you get a snake. There we go, we've got the power key. Uh, and now we need to go and get two more dog tags. So before we go and start doing the pal key, we're going to go back to the warehouse. Now, obviously, in a, in a casual run, if you didn't know about um, the other method of, of, um, getting the, um, of getting the key frozen, you'd come back and get these dog tags whilst, uh, whilst you were um, freezing the key. Um, it's quicker for us to not freeze the key this way and just come back to the warehouse now instead. So I'm going to go down here. It's going to be a guard here. Hold him up. Don't kill me. Sorry, dude, I am. To get his dog tag. Uh, and then we move up to this guard. Just, just at the entrance. Hold him up. Help. Actually, we're just going to bump through him and move. We won't kill him. 
Okay, so that is um, that is that room. Back through here. I'm gonna grab uh, grab that stinger ammo just to just to be on the safe side. Um, and that is it for dog tags until the very end of the run. Uh, there are 27 dog tags in Very Easy. We now have 26 dog tags. Uh, so now we can just get through this um, this section of uh, of the power key. Fortunately, there's now a guard that we have to crawl over there, which is uh, not too much of a problem. We're going to equip the power key. <laughs> just maybe your type got hit with fox tie. <laughs> Uh, luckily, that guard's nice and out of the way, so we don't have to um, slowly run over the top of him. Roll into here, and we're going to put in the first pal key. So for those, for those who, oh, make it, I'm making more mistakes. <laughs> just gonna, I'm just going to kill myself. Uh, I was supposed to shoot that camera. I don't know. I don't know if the uh, the timer originally failed because I uh, I took a continue earlier. Oh, the mo moment I walked into that room, I knew what I'd done. I'm supposed to stop, turn, and shoot that camera. <laughs> there we go. Another little, another little, uh, another little loss there. But oh well. All right. So now, rather than going to the back, all the way back to the warehouse to freeze the key. Um, the developers of Twin Snakes put in a little um, a little shortcut. So now that we're in here, we never have to leave this room again. There are two pipes. Ooh, sugar. Uh, there are two pipes on the other side of the room. So if I go all the way around here and down here, grab that. You see, there's two pipes here. The right one is a cold pipe which immediately, and there's no waiting around either. Um, in the original, we'd go down to the warehouse and we'd have to wait 61 seconds for the, the key to freeze. Um, in Twin Snakes, it is instant. We just shoot that pipe, the key changes, we go back and put it in. Exactly the same for the hot key. Um, we will go back to those pipes, we'll shoot the left one, which is the hot pipe, we'll immediately turn it into the, the red hot key, and then we move on. So. Um, in the, the race I was talking about, where I race, um, I will be racing House Test, um, when he's playing the original, I'm playing this, this is the point where I massively start to catch up. He gets a big head start uh, very, very early on and maintains that lead throughout, and this is where I can then catch him up, because of course, he's got to go all the way up to the Blast Furnace, um, and on, on Twin Snakes, this bit is a lot, lot shorter. So again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Over to those pipes. Still desperately trying to get my timer to start working again, but I really don't. I really don't know what's happened with it. Uh, luckily, there is an in, there is an in-game timer, um, which we'll see at the end of the credits. Um, so we will actually be able to see what my time is. Uh, but I can tell you that we're we're like ten minutes away from the end. If that, if that, in fact, that's probably a massive overestimation. All right, so we're going to make our way back up. Step over that body. Uh, if we weren't collecting all dog tags, if we were just doing any percent, um, we'd actually deliberately try and shoot these bodies so that they um, they fell over the railings and fell on the floor below us, just so they get out of our way, so that when we come back up here, we don't have to tiptoe over them. We can just run straight through. Uh, there probably is a way on all dog tags of getting them bet, um, more out of the way, but we don't really care. We more care about, you know, not taking two continues to get that guy's dog tags. All right, so we are coming up to the very final portion of the game. We're going to go and put in the hot pal key. Uh, for those who don't know the story, the reason we're doing this is we're trying to um, disable Metal Gear. Metal Gear is is armed and ready to launch. We're putting in the power sequence to disable it and stop the launch. Unfortunately, we've been tricked. Uh, the launch was never ready, and by putting in the power key sequence, uh, we've actually armed Metal Gear instead. And this is where Master Miller, who actually turns out to be Liquid, uh, tells us his grand plan. Oh my god, it was Liquid all along! <laughs> Bum, 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 bum. Uh, we've got to call Ark on here so that he can get us out of the gas. Now, 
now. Move over to the door. As soon as I flatten against the door, I can answer the codec call. And we're on to our penultimate boss fight. This is Metal Gear Rex. And you might be thinking, oh, big mech. You know, this is going to be really intricate, like running around, avoiding attacks. Nah, it's pretty easy. Um, we move into a position where uh, Rex's uh, missiles can't hers. And we just shoot the radar. Except those missiles. Oh, I shot that one a bit too early. There we go. By standing in that position, those missiles will never hit us. Um, so that bit's really easy. And if you thought that bit was easy, phase, phase two is easy, even easier. Um, the spot where the missiles can't hit you is the spot you start the fight in. Um, so we're just going to stand perfectly still, equip the stinger, and just shoot liquid. Uh, this cutscene is unskippable. Uh, this is uh, Grey Fox. Grey Fox has stepped in to, to help us out. Get a bum. There's the bum. And so now, as I said, we just cook the stinger. There you are. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ah, missed that last shot, but there we go. And that's Metal Gear Rex. Um, yeah, on... <laughs> On Twin Snakes, particularly on, on this difficulty at the very least, very, very easy fight. Uh, and now we have Liquid and we have Dog Tag number 27. Our final Dog Tag of the run. Uh, to get it, we have to knock Liquid off. Luckily, during the uh, Twin Snakes tournament, um, a runner called JMC found a really good way of getting a big chunk of damage. <laughs> which also knocks Liquid off. That's called the JM Chunk. Does a nice little chunk of damage to Liquid. Oh, unfortunately, I set that bit up a bit. No, uh, not as well. I'm now going to try and set up Liquid for what we call a lottery roll. Uh, there's a little one. Like, he's now into the next phase. So for the final part of this fight, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to repeat this. If I were to punch, punch, kick him, he'd fall over. Or if I had to punch him again, he'd fall over. So we just keep going round and round in circles like this. Just little little bits of damage consistently. I'm hoping he is going to fall off the edge. So I'm going to need to try and coax him away. Come away. And instead, he's decided to go to a different edge. That's better. There we go. Now he's not going to fall off. Silly liquid. And that's the liquid fight. All right, we are almost done. Fortunately, we play through some cutscenes where we learn that Meryl did not survive our sort of torture. She's now dead. We are going to escape with Otacon instead. Uh, and the escape sequence is is actually very very similar to the original. There's not much. There's not much difference. Uh, I see a question in, in the chat. Uh, the Punch Punch Infinite does not work in Twin Snakes. In, uh, in the original, to fight Liquid, we do something called the, uh, the Liquid Infinite, where we just consistently punch him over and over again. There is kind of an infinite punch uh, that we can set up. It's a bit awkward to set up, and it's not always reliable. Um, and also, you wouldn't do it throughout the whole, whole of the fight. Um, I don't tend to go for it, because, it's, as I say, it's a bit unreliable at times. That was not. That was nice. They uh, shot me after I shot the. Um, after I shot those barrels. So for the escape route, we're just gonna, you know, shoot the, shoot the barrels as we escape. I don't really need to keep shooting. Right. So here's the first one. Shoot that barrel. Come on. Now shoot that barrel. And then there's going to be a barrel on the left, uh, a barrel on the right. We're actually going to ignore the barrel on the right. Here they come. Uh, unfortunately, there's a, there's a lot of RNG here with how the guards shoot you. Uh, so you usually lose a little bit of time here just because you get shot and the snake darts off in one direction or the other. Uh, now onto the very final phase, liquid. Uh, we, you know, 
know, we shot Liquid whilst he was in Metal Gear X. We punched him in a fist fight on top of Metal Gear X and knocked him off and he fell to his death. But he's not actually dead. He's still not dead. So now we have a nice little escape sequence. Um, this is not on rails. Um, we, uh, Liquid does have a health bar. We just can't see it. We have to shoot him a certain number of times. Missed a transition shot there, which is not unusual. So we just keep, keep shooting him every time he pops up. There we go. Get ready for the next phase. Oh, come on, quid. Now he's going to move over to the left. Missed another transition shot, but transition shots are very difficult on Twin Snakes. So we're nearly done. Just coming out of this phase. After all. One more hit on Liquid. And that is the end of the game. There's not time. Obviously, the time is still running anyway. Because um, we have a couple of cutscenes uh, and codecs to skip through. And time is when the the first set of um, real-life statistics about nuclear weapons appears on screen. And um, that is when the official in-game timer ends. Uh, so time is now so that is that is time as uh, so the in-game timer that runs has now ended uh, because we're on the emulator um we can actually fast forward through it doesn't affect the igt so i'm now going to hold tab um to skip through the end credits a bit quicker um, my original i we should be ahead of time because my original um estimate included the credits because in order to verify this run and show that it definitely is what it is we need to see the igt at the score screen at the end we then need to save it and we need to load that save in the dog tag viewer to show that we collected all 27 dog tags uh, because we're skipping through this um, at a faster speed we get this really cool little you know, sped up remix of uh, the best is yet to come um no, it was not for it was not 4431. My my splitter my auto splitter died halfway through. <laughs> my auto splitter died halfway through. Um I'm guessing with the deaths that I had, this is probably gonna be a uh I would guess this is probably gonna be 102 something. That is, that is what I would guess. Uh, but we will see the time um, um at the end of the credits. It doesn't take it doesn't take too long. Uh, but whilst, we, whilst we're skipping through the credits, now's a really good time to, to talk about Twin Snakes and talk about Metal Gear Speedrunners. So if you've enjoyed watching either Un Unmetal or Twin Snakes today, um, and you want to learn either of these games, or you want to learn any game in the Metal Gear series, and I mean any game in the Metal Gear series, um, then go to MetalGearSpeedrunners.com. Um, there you'll find links to uh, our stream, our Discord server. We have an amazing community of runners who run every single game in the series. You want to run Rising? We've got Rising Runners. You want to run the original MSX games? We've got MSX Runners. You want to run Metal Gear Survive? We've got Metal Gear Survive Runners who will gladly take anyone under their wing and teach them how to play Metal Gear Survive. So any game in the series you want to play, we've got people um, who want to run. We've got a wiki that, will, uh, that has loads of information about how to run these games. Um, and of course, the speedrun.com where all of our records are on there. Um, I, I, I am the second best runner in this category. Um, if you want to see this category, if you want to see Twin Snakes run well, uh, you want to uh, look out for a guy called Blue Metal. He's an absolutely amazing Twin Snakes runner. Um, he's done this category in just over 58 minutes, which is an absolutely amazing time. I, I did get the world record once. Uh, in this run, and then Blue Metal went, oh, okay, there's actually some competition for this now. I'll actually put some effort in and uh, got it down to 58 minutes. So, um, amazing. So, yeah, please come and check out MetalGearSpeedruns.com. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing community. Um, you'll be very welcome in, in any game that you want to learn. And we're always looking for more runners. Um, so, yeah, come come check us out. Um I've been Nick RP Green. Come check me out. I'm on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. Just Nick RP Green on, on all of them. Just type that in. You'll find me. I've uh, My YouTube is absolutely littered uh, with unmetal stuff. I've um, It has pretty much become just an unmetal hub at the moment. Um, so, yeah, you know, check check me out in, in those locations. I, I hope you've enjoyed watching these two runs. Um, 102, as I suggested, 102.14... Uh, is my final time. That's kind of what I was expecting. 
Um, not a bad run. Not a bad run at all. Um, apart from you know those little those deaths where I had to I had to reset to get that dog tag. But the important thing is, did I actually get all twenty seven dog tags? That's the important question that we do uh, we do need answering. So I'm going to save the game, save it to memory card slot A, a new file. Uh, so there we go. We can see. Uh, 2021-0810. I don't know why that's what it thinks the date is. Um, that is save slot 37. So now we go back to the main menu. Let's wait for the... Back to the main menu. Go to special. Dog tag viewer. We load up our save. Uh, unfortunately, we have to... Go, we have to go through every single one of these uh, to get to the very bottom of the list. There it is, save slot 37, load that save slot. Scroll over to very easy, and there we go, 100%, all 27 dog tags. Uh, it says 26 there, but that's because the first one is, uh, is dog tag zero. So there we go, that is it. That is Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes, very easy, all dog tags. I hope... Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope you've enjoyed watching Unmetal. I want to say big thank you to uh, Retrothon for, for letting me run these two games today. Please enjoy the rest of the marathon. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. Have a, have a great rest of uh, Retrothon.